Hello, everybody. Welcome back to Front End Jirachi. In today's video, we will continue the discussion of designing a WYSIWYG rich text editor. In the last video, we talked about the technical requirements and technical options. In today's video, we will dive deep into the component architecture and the editor states. So let's get started. First of all, let's talk a little bit about the editor state. How are we going to represent the editor states and what options do we have? Basically, we have two options. First of all, we can use the DOM nodes to represent editor states. The second option is to use a JavaScript object to represent editor states. The cons of first approach is that DOM manipulation and DOM operation is very expensive. We may be consuming too many memories. So let's take a look at how we can use a JavaScript object to represent editor states. The editor states can contain two parts, a node tree and a selection object. The node tree could contain a single root node that is always the top, which represents the content editable itself. Root node can contain children that represents the content in the editor. We can have different types of nodes. For example, we can use element node that represents either a paragraph or a heading or a link. We can also have a text node that represents normal text, bold text, italic, underline, or strikes through. So let's look at examples of each node and define their interface. The root node, similar to all the other nodes, can have a children property. It also has a type of root. You can specify the direction based on the language. This is also part of the accessibility consideration. You can further specify the indentation. Next, we look at an example of element node. An element node similar to the root node have all the similar properties besides an extra tag property. Let's look at a slightly more complex example. Here we have a paragraph node. You can see the type paragraph. It contains multiple children. Each child is a text node. We can have a format property that maps the number to the format. Zero represent normal text node. One represent bold text. And two represents italic, etc. Just uh, one more note, if you want to customize the style of a node, you can specify the optional style property. We mentioned a code editor could contain a node tree and a selection node. For the selection node, we can define the anchor and focus properties. You can think of them as a start and end property. Using this structure, we can specify whether the selection is from left to right or from right to left and what type of content is selected. In previous video, we mentioned undo redo functionality. Again, we can have two options to achieve undo and redo functionality. One is to keep different versions of the editor states so that we can implement the undo redo functionality. Another approach is to document the diff between each version. So when we undo or redo the editor state, we play the step to generate the previous state. The first approach, which is to keep the different versions of the editor states in memory, absolutely consumes more storage and memory space because we're saving every state in the user machine. The second approach consumes less resources, but it may be too granular and we may want to merge the steps and provide a less granular experience but we should discuss this with the interviewer to figure out what they want. If we pick to keep all the editor states in memory, I think we should try to use the immutable data structure so that we don't have to worry about side effects of array or object manipulation changing the original data reference. So I think that's about it for the component architecture and editor states. If you find the video useful, please consider giving me a like and subscribe. Your support really keeps me making videos like this. Stay tuned and I'll make another video about the optimizations. Mm -hmm.